today we're gonna be talking about Fujifilm film recipe. Hey guys, it's your boy Mackie and I'm a photographer and filmmaker by profession um, and welcome to the first episode of T3, finally. Um, anyway, uh, since it's everyone's first time, including myself, I just wanted to say that this is a series where I'll be talking about tips, tricks, and tutorials for photography and videography. So today's episode is just, you know, a little simple tips video for, well, technically Fujifilm users, um, just to get my foot in the door of this whole YouTube thing because I'm still not used to YouTubing after my big, not big, but long hiatus. Huh. I'm sweating already. Anyways, uh, for you guys who follow my social media accounts, last year I was very blessed to be a part of Fujifilm's ambassadors for the X-T30. And um, actually when I got that camera, I fell in love. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I'm an ambassador, um, but really I, I stopped using my other camera for this camera that's taking this video right now. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, one of the main things that I really, really like about the Fuji system is the way it renders and processes their JPEG images. I don't know about you guys, but if you've seen a, a JPEG image of Fujifilm straight off the camera, it's absolutely gorgeous. Sometimes I don't even think I need to edit it anymore. And that is um, really thanks to you know the way it mimics their film stock. So um, the picture profiles of Fujifilm um, actually mimic their film stocks from before. So you can have Eterna, you can have uh, Classic Chrome, Provia, Velvia, all of that stuff. It's just really amazing because straight off the camera, you have really good images already. And to be honest, ever since I got this camera, I haven't shot in RAW. Um, using my other cameras, I normally shoot in RAW profile. Um, but for Fujifilm, I shoot JPEG all the time. I really think that the way, you know, Fujifilm really renders its images is, is just good for me. But one of the new things that I found recently during the quarantine is the fact that there is such a thing called um, film recipes for Fujifilm. And um, I stumbled upon the blog of Fuji X Weekly. But I guess it'll pop up in the feed go for some reason. You know, film recipes are just this whole other, you know, universe, I guess, for, for Fujifilm users because a lot actually just use JPEG like myself. It's very similar kasi, to, to the way we use picture profiles in other camera systems, right? So when you have a picture profile, um, it has a certain look and you can adjust, you know, a lot of the settings in that look. So you can adjust, you know, the color, you know, temperature, tint, you can adjust the sharpness, you can add green, reduce green, um, highlight shadows, all of that. With Fujifilm, with uh, their you know basic picture profiles really mimicking their film stock it actually creates the best foundation to copy other kinds of you know older film um, you know i have actually very little experience in film photography um, but my favorite uh, film that i've used is the kodak portra 400 and luckily Fuji X Weekly has a recipe for the Kodak Portra 400, which I um, copied. <laughs> anyway, when I used Kodak Portra 400 for the first time, it was uh, my best friend, Galil, who gave me a role. After I had it developed, when I saw the pictures, um, they looked absolutely gorgeous and I fell in love with the look. I've been playing around with this film recipe for a while, for the last, you know, last couple of days. And here are the settings that I used. So the settings that I used are actually the exact settings from the blog. Um, I just copied it straight up. Uh, I didn't really modify anything yet. Maybe I will later on, but right now, no modification. And if you want to check it out, uh, the link is down at the description. Uh, and if you want to check it out, the link is down below. Anyway, there's no point in me telling you that I just, you know, got this film recipe and took shots with it. So I might as well show you <laughs> all the shots that I talked about. So here are some of the images that I took using the Kodak Portra 400 film recipe. Now, believe it or not, all of these images are straight from in-camera processing. So I did not alter them at all in Photoshop or in Lightroom. This is straight from the camera. 
using a native Fujinon lens actually looks way too perfect. So um, to make it look more like film, I used some of my vintage lenses with a converter. And I think it really does the job. So yeah, those are the images that I took. Um, you guys can comment down below if you like them, if you don't like the look or whatever. I personally really, really like the look. And you know, just the discovery of this whole new world of film recipes just really changes the game for me. I've always loved the form factor of Fujifilm cameras because they look like film cameras, but now just knowing that I can have, you know, film look straight out of the camera from in-camera processing, it just, you know, makes me love the system all the more. So I'm definitely gonna be shooting in this picture profile for a while, um, especially when I don't wanna edit. I don't know, it just gives me a lot of satisfaction to shoot with the film look coming out of the camera. For Fujifilm users out there, you can actually check Fuji X Weekly for more of their film recipes. The other really nice one that I could recommend is the Kodachrome, which is a popular photojournalist film stock from way before. So people like Steve McCurry used to use that film. And I think you know a lot of you street photographers out there might really, really like it as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys like the Kodak Portra 400 film recipe and you know if you like the looks of the images. You can also let me know down below what kind of content you guys wanna see on T3. I actually have a set of topics that I might talk about, you know, tutorials and, and such that I might talk about later on. But I really wanna know what you guys would wanna see uh, in this series. All right, I guess that's it for episode one of T3. Again, if you guys like the comment, please like. If you guys wanna see more content, please subscribe. And always remember, don't hesitate, create. Peace.